Hey everybody, thanks for checking out today's Multiphonic A Day. My name is Ben, I'm a bassoonist based in Chicago, and today is March 21st, 2020. That's day eight of my self-isolation, and this is day five of Multiphonic A Day. Today's Multiphonic, or Multiphonics rather, are recorded for Vince DeSantis. Vince is another bassoonist based here in Chicago. He's a dear friend and a longtime colleague of mine. Vince and I met, I think, in 2009 at Interlochen which now is apparently 11 years ago, which is crazy. Um, in any case, a couple of days ago, Vince wrote to me and he asked me to do a video about those multiphonics that give the illusion of playing a note lower than the low B flat. So as many of you probably know, the low B flat, B flat one, is traditionally the lowest note on the bassoon. It sounds like this. And uh, most bassoonists will tell you that we're often in the standard repertoire asked to play a low A below that. And the most common way we deal with that is to use some kind of a tube to extend the tube of the bassoon inserted in the bell. Um, you know, cardboard, uh, paper towel tubes work well for that. And I finally this year shelled out and got a fancy uh, black plastic one from Forrest's. And I've got a little rubber band here um, to set um, when I put it in that it goes about where I need it to. to playing in tune A. So probably the most common example of the low A in the standard repertoire is the very last note of the Nielsen Woodland Quintet. Uh, the whole third movement is based around this chorale, and the last iteration of the chorale ends on this really luscious, warm A major chord. It sounds kind of like this. satisfying ending to that piece and um, I've had that piece on my mind a lot because that's one of the pieces I was supposed to be performing this week a couple of times with a few colleagues of mine from the Civic Orchestra in Chicago and so I just want to give a quick shout out to Luke and Lilia and Nico and Abby I miss making music with you guys and I hope we get to play the Nielsen again soon so as Vince indicated there's another way to get this low A pitch, which I would kind of characterize as a band room bassoon trick that I've known about for a little while, and that's with a multiphonic that makes it sound like there's a low A there. And the fingering for that is in the left hand, one, two, whisper key, right hand, one, two, three, and the F key, and it sounds like this. So it's a bit raucous and noisy, but you can hear a low A in there. If I play a scale down, it might be uh, easier to hear. Which might be a nice alternate ending for the Nielsen, actually. <laughs> commonly played quintets but every time I play that piece it's just I'm reminded of how how really wonderful it is so that was a fingering that I'd known for a while and in the last couple days I've been poking around on the internet a little bit and I found this amazing video that Trent, Trent Jacobs made uh, showing the, the fingerings and him playing all the way down to a low F below that and I'll put a link to that video below here so you can check it out definitely have a look at it because he's a lot more facile with those fingerings than I am. Um, and I'm not sure if these are fingerings that he discovered or got from elsewhere, but um, they make it possible to go all the way down there. I'll show you how it sounds. that's that low is, is pretty amazing. And so I was picking my brain because, you know, it's, it's commonly known that the low B flat is the fundamental of the uh, bassoon 
and that's the you know makes sense that that's the lowest note that it can play so how is it that by using these multiphonics these trick fingerings we're able to get pitches that are significantly below that and so i was doing some some digging some reading and my best guess is that this is a case of what's called the missing fundamental and what that means is that sometimes when we hear a sound even if a fundamental frequency isn't present our ear recognizes higher harmonics in the spectrum of that sound and sort of reverse engineers that fundamental frequency in the way that we interpret the sound. So an example of that is, you know, if you're listening to a Brahms symphony on a really crappy pair of speakers, they might not be able to produce the lowest sounds of the bass or the contrabassoon, for example, but we still hear them as being there just tinier because all that we're actually hearing are the upper harmonics and our brain is interpreting that fundamental frequency to be in there. So I found an article that breaks this down in pretty simple terms, which I'll also link below here. And it also has a uh, audio sample where they've isolated certain uh, harmonics with the same music being played, which was really helpful for me to understand how it works to actually be able to hear it. Because when I first heard that concept, it was kind of jarring to me. And it's just really a fascinating psychoacoustic phenomenon. So in any case, uh, thank you all for watching. Thanks for continuing to give me your feedback. As you can tell, any requests that I'm getting, I'm doing my best to honor and to talk about in some videos. So if there's anything that you'd like to hear in particular, anything you have a question about, any technique that I'm talking about that you'd like to hear more of, or if there's a piece um, that you'd like me to look into, just let me know in the comments or shoot me a message. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.